All right, let's take you back to this story now. Cape Town officials are promising more boots on the ground today as the Santago taxi strike enters its second day. Let's speak to J.P. Smith, City of Cape Town's mayoral committee member for safety and security. Mr. Smith, good morning and thank you very much for your time. It seems the stay away is more controlled today, at least from where our reporters have been visiting. How is it looking broadly, though? Uh, you're correct. Today is calm. We've um, not seen any incidents of violence today. Uh, yesterday, uh, from around uh, 9 o'clock, 9.30 onwards, it was calm, uh, other than some stone-throwing incidents and a scene in which the city's uh, enforcement resource, along with SAP's flying squad, uh, intercepted a vehicle in Delft, a taxi with three men in, with a whole range of petrol bombs, um, which they appear to be preparing to use, presumably to uh, create a new um, area of, of conflict in Delft. Um, uh, during the day, there were five arrests, but the violence was confined to the early morning when there were some uh, very cowardly and opportunistic attacks on buses. Uh, in some cases, the, the occupants being f uh, having to flee the bus. Uh, and it's that really that, that I think drives the ire of the general public and the, the city. Uh, we have had lead staff members, the city's enforcement staff, riding on the buses and escorts of the buses with enforcement staff uh, in front and behind. Uh, that's obviously not a sustainable solution. But today is much calmer and the violence very much confined to a portion of Kailitsha. Um, and then the one incident in Delft where stone throwing led a, caused a bus to uh, uh, lose control and crash into another vehicle, fortunately, mm -hmm. with no serious injuries. Um, it's, it's been confined to that. Uh, today, we have very significant uh, enforcement resources out on the road. Mm -hmm. So would you attribute the calmness to the reinforcement? Because then some would wonder why perhaps there was no foresight and where you actually did this yesterday and escorted some of those buses and perhaps prevented the damage that we saw. Uh, no, ma'am, the same resources were out early yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest that what has changed in the equation now is that we have made it very clear to Santaco's leadership that we intend to hold them accountable for the damage of the, um, the, the two buses uh, and that we are going to take civil and criminal action against them. Uh, we are lawyers are busy preparing those because if you call for a protest and your protest gets violent, whether you deny involvement and whether you try and abdicate responsibility uh, is of little significance. The fact remains is the protest you called for has resulted in public violence. Um, mm -hmm. And therefore, the, the responsibility of that is going to vest with the Santaco leadership ultimately. All right. And then let's move to the issue that or the issues that have taken them to the streets. It's the impounding of vehicles and the cancellation of the Blue Dot taxi pilot project. Let's perhaps start with the unfair impoundment of their vehicles. At least that's what they say. They say it's unfair. Just talk to us about this. Um, I would suggest, ma'am, that we are not impounding enough of their vehicles. Remember that the impoundment of vehicles happens exclusively in terms of national legislation. They are complaining about a bylaw that is not in effect yet, so the complaint is misleading. The impoundments are all happening in terms of national law, so their fight is with the national minister uh, of transport, not with the city or provincial government. Uh, this is the National Land Transportation Act that says that if you operate a public transport vehicle without an operating permit or off the route or contrary to the conditions of that permit, that your vehicle is required to be impounded, and all impoundments are done in terms of that other than the few where roadworthy vehicles, unroadworthy vehicles have been suspended and continue to operate. But that's a very small percentage. So mm -hmm. their argument here is with national government. Um, but I will tell you that the, mem the public in Cape Town are asking us to do more, that the driving behavior daily of taxis, minibus taxis, Avanzas, even ear hailing vehicles is so poor that the public are demanding increased action. And that's not limited to certain parts of the city, it's citywide. It is the largest complaints category within the traffic enforcement space. And therefore, uh, my colleague, Councillor Mzwakeng Mavashe, as the portfolio chairperson and the multi-party uh, portfolio committee have drafted and at the end of last uh, and, and recently in the last few months, um, it has been gazetted, the new traffic bylaw, but that is not in effect yet. When it does come in effect, it creates additional conditions under which vehicles may be impounded for driving behavior. 
Mm -hmm. Now, you had responded to those pleas with your initiative being the Blue Dot Incentive, which was a great initiative that encouraged taxi operators to abide by the law. But that particular one has been done away with. Why exactly is this the case? So this is not the city's initiative. Um, mm. So when you say you, uh, you need to redirect that to the provincial government, um, obviously. But uh, they had an, an initiative which they clearly indicated was a proof of concept or a test. Uh, it was not indicated that it would run in perpetuity and it was conditional upon uh, the driving behavior and the conduct of public transport operators meaningfully and measurably improving. Province okay. will have to explain by themselves as to why they've discontinued that. But my understanding is that that there is simply in the ex experience of the officials in the provincial government, and I think in that of the general public, that the project was was not uh, meaningful, that um, uh, meaningful outcomes were not being achieved, mm -hmm. uh, that the public was seeing the so-called blue dot taxis uh, engaging in very problematic driving behavior every day, including intimidation cases. And as a consequence, the general public's mood, as one um, interviewer uh, uh, himself said to me yesterday, why should you be paying people to obey the law? Everybody should be incentivized to obey the law. Otherwise, why don't you pay every motorist an incentive or subsidy for obeying the law? You don't praise a bird for flying and you don't praise a public transport operator for driving safely within the confines of the law. That is my sentiment as well. And uh, I'm afraid that maybe some introspection is required here within that industry. But can I tell you, regardless of what the dissatisfaction is, you never, ever, ever have the right to engage in public transport of violence and destroy the assets of others, threaten and intimidate others, as happened all throughout yesterday, where we saw the so-called enforcers of some of these taxi associations driving around and threatening and pushing people off the road, stopping them. We have so many complaints over the last few weeks of the, of the taxi industry, specifically minibus taxis, threatening people, trying to seize hold of their vehicles and trying to charge them extortion amounts, trying to prevent them from um, operating in certain areas where the taxis want a monopoly, that I think the public temperament or, or attitude towards minibus taxis has reached a breaking point where the people are now demanding stern and significant action. And I'm afraid we are going to have to comply and, and assist because the situation is going to fall. Uh, Santaka and the taxi associations do not have effective control of their members. And if All they right. do have control of their members, they're clearly guiding them poorly.